Hello friends, welcome to Zeal to Know. So I am here with the English classes of the CPZ Medical Coding. We were dealing with ICD. Then in the diagnosis coding, it's been a long time because I, I took a very long gap on English classes. I was continuing with my Malayalam classes more. Okay, so we have reached in the Malayalam classes, we have reached till chapter 15. Okay, chapter 15 I'm going on. Next video will be the chapter 6, 15. It is divided into two parts because it's a very big chapter. Anyway, if you need the Malayalam chapters, you can come to the description box. Yes, and it will be the link will be there. All right. So can we start our next chapter? Okay. On the previous chapter, we have discussed about the HIV. Yes, infections. We have certain infectious diseases, parasitic infections, everything we have discussed. All right. So in this chapter, what we are going to discuss is our neoplasm. Neoplasm, certainly, if you are from the medical background, you will be able to recognize it. What is a neoplasm? But if you are not from a medical background, then neoplasm yes you'll be confused don't be confused neoplasm is just a small growth in your body okay it can be divided into some classifications we have some four type of classification in our icd 10 cm textbook all right so the neoplasms are classified based on that all right can we start the first point so as i have already mentioned Neoplasm is a small growth or an abnormal growth or an excessive growth. We can say all these words, okay? So it is classified into four. The first one is benign. Benign means there will be a certain neoplasm, but it may or may not be infectious or it may be present, but it won't, it won't damage you. It won't give you any trouble, okay? So that is known as a benign one. Second one is a malignant one, which is the most important. Okay, so malignant neoplasm or we can say it's a cancer. Cancer is more certain to you. Cancer is more, yeah, it is a common word used by you. Okay, so we can say cancer either or we can say the malignant neoplasm. Okay, then the third classification is the in situ then the fourth one is the uncertain histologic behavior. The first point is treatment at malignancy. That means a patient is coming to the doctor, yes, for the treatment of the malignancy or the cancer. Then the primary will be, yes, obviously, primary will be the malignancy. Then secondary, depending upon the additional conditions, additional diagnosis, the doctor gives. Then the second one, the second point we can say is the treatment directed at the secondary site. What is the secondary site? That's the point. All right. First thing, um, let it be a patient with a lung cancer. Okay. A patient is having lung cancer and it is metastasized to the, let it be liver or any other organs okay so whichever organ which it is metastasized is known as the secondary site so even if the primary is present and the patient comes to the doctor for the treatment of the secondary site then we have to call the secondary site as primary because the reason for encounter today is the secondary site is it clear okay the general idea is the reason for the encounter should be the primary and rest everything should be secondary. But in some cases, this flips out. So that cases you just not and like you have to by heart it carefully so that you won't forget it. Okay. Otherwise, all the guidelines are very simple. You can just check on the guidelines, check on the some of the uh, some of the codes you can memorize so that you will be able to eliminate many things when it comes to MCQs. So next comes the complications. Coding and sequencing of the complications. Here comes one flip code. Anemia in 
malignancy. Sorry, I was going to tell neoplasm, but anemia in malignancy. Okay, if a patient is having cancer and they have anemia, because of the cancer they have developed anemia. Okay, so for that the patient comes. Even if the patient comes from for the treatment of anemia, the primary should be the malignancy because with which it has developed. So the primary should be malignancy and secondary will be our anemic cord. So the next topic is anemia associated with chemotherapy, radiotherapy or immunotherapy. Okay, there are three therapies and if it is associated with that condition, the anemia is associated with that condition, what should we call? Here is a flip. Because it's not a flip actually. The first one was a flip and here it is a reason for encounter is anemia. Because which uh, like... Uh, with the radiotherapy or chemotherapy or uh, immunotherapy, the patient has developed anemia. And the patient has come to the doctor for the treatment of this anemia. Okay. So the reason for encounter is which one? Yes, it is the anemia. Then secondary, it will be neoplasm. Okay. First, I will say the case of chemotherapy. So in chemotherapy, the primary will be anemia okay secondary will be yes the neoplasm of course and third will be the adverse effect okay it is at the adverse effect of some uh, what we can say anti neoplastic or the immunosuppressive drugs it can be so it can range from the t cords t45.1 x5 all right so you understood the basic concept is if it is a chemotherapy, yes, the first one is associated, anemia is associated with chemotherapy. The first primary cord is anemia, second is the neoplasm and third is the, yeah, due to which that is our immunosuppressive drugs or anti-neoplastic drugs, okay, it can come across. Then we have for radio, radiotherapy. For the radiotherapy also, same thing proceeds. The first one, the primary will be anemia. The secondary will be the neoplasm. And the third, third will be because of that procedure. Because of the radiotherapy procedure, the patient has developed. So, Y84.2, which is a radiological procedure and radiotherapy as a cause of abnormal reaction of the patient. Next topic is the management of dehydration due to malignancy. All right. Here, yeah, what we have discussed in anemia is, yeah, malignancy comes the first. But in dehydration, dehydration will be the primary. So it comes as a flip one. Yes, it comes as a flip one for that. But it is normal because the reason for encounter is dehydration. So dehydration will be the primary and secondary will be the malignancy. Alright. If a surgical procedure, because of a surgical procedure for the neoplasm, complication occurs. Alright. A complication occurs due to the surgery, surgical procedure for the neoplasm. So the primary will be the complication, because the reason for encounter is a complication, so primary will be complication, secondary will be our neoplasm. Next topic is the primary malignancy previously excised. You know what is excision? Yes, it is removal or taking out. Okay, so if the primary uh, malignancy is already eradicated or excised, but the patient is having the secondary malignancy. What is the secondary malignancy? It is metastasis to another organ. Okay. So the patient is coming. Let it be a lung and the pancreas. Alright. So primary is a lung and secondary is a pancreatic. Alright. Okay. So in the lung, they have already done the surgical procedure, everything and it is excised. Now the primary malignancy in lung is not present. But we have to show the history, even if we are treating for the 
the secondary neoplasm of the pancreas. Okay. Today the patient has come for the secondary malignancy treatment. That is our pancreas treatment. Okay. So we have to show the history. The patient was having some, yes, history of excised malignancy. So that we will show by Z85. Z85. Next topic is admission or encounter involving chemotherapy, radiotherapy or immunotherapy. Okay, first we have to discuss the episode of care involves a removal, removal of the neoplasm surgically. If a surgical removal of the neoplasm occurs, so what will be the primary? Yes, the primary will be solely the neoplasm. Alright, then if the encounter is solely for, there is no other treatment plan, today the patient has come for chemotherapy. Or the patient has come for immunotherapy. Or the patient has come for radiotherapy. So what will be the primary? Alright. So the primary will be for the radiation therapy Z51.0. Z51.0. Then for the chemotherapy Z51.11. Z51.11. Then for the immunotherapy Z51.12. These will be the primary and secondary will be the malignancy. Clear? Next, if the patient with having the encounter, patient is coming for the implantation or insertion of some radioactive elements. For example, brachytherapy. Okay? So in this case, yes, we should think radiotherapy, immunotherapy, everything what we have done. The primary is that therapy. But here there is a flip. Remember in brachytherapy, malignancy is a primary and brachytherapy will be the secondary. Malignancy is the primary and the brachytherapy is the secondary. Clear? Then, then the patient is coming for the chemotherapy, immunotherapy or radiotherapy and it evolves to some complication. Some complication occurs. Then what is the change? Then the primary will change to the complication. Alright? Then the primary will be changing to the complication. Okay? Due to the complication, like uh, if a patient is coming for the chemo, radio or immunotherapy and a complication occurs, then the primary will be the complication. Clear? Okay, next topic is malignancy in two or more contagious sites. That means, that means one or site, the same organ is affected. Okay, one or more sites, the same organ. So in this case, what happens is that the documentation is a solved one. So we will go to documentation, what the documentation suggests, which is having the severity, according to that we will code as primary or secondary. Clear? Then we have disseminated malignant neoplasm unspecified. That means, okay, a patient is here and it is almost metastasized to many organs. And we cannot determine which organ it started, which is a primary, which is a secondary, which is a tertiary. We cannot, yeah, differentiate between them. So if it is a condition, then C80.0 we can suggest. C80.0 is a malignant neoplasm primary unspecified. So the malignant neoplasm in pregnancy. For a pregnant patient, what will be the primary? Pregnancy is having a sequencing priority over all the chapters. Okay, that we will be discussing in chapter 15 when we go go through all these chapters and when we come to chapter 15 we will be discussing that but for now i'll say the primary will be 09a.1 which is the complicating pregnancy because of the malignancy okay then malignancy will be coded as the secondary one all right the last topic if a malignancy is associated with a transplanted organ a transplanted organ can be possible, right? 
So in that case, what will be the primary? There is a code from the category T86, which will be the primary, the complication of the transplanted organ and tissue. Okay, T86 category. So from the T86 category, it will be the primary. That is the complication of the transplanted organ and tissue. Then the secondary will be the malignancy. Alright, this is all for the neoplasm chapter. This chapter is very simple. But the same hand, at the same hand, it is a very, very, very important topic. Because there will be questions based on the cancer. At least one or two questions is must from this chapter. Okay, so the cancer or the malignancy chapter is very easy to take marks. Why? Because we, we can have options for eliminating many MCQs. Okay, multiple choices we can just eliminate and find the answers very quickly in Neoplasm chapter. Anyway, I think, I just think, I just hope that you like my video. If you like my video, please do share. Share with your friends. Share with your family or who all are need with our CPC course. Okay, you will be knowing your friends. Okay, so this is not, not really for the medical background people. You uh, are unless, okay. Non-medical background people can also score very good. Because I am from a non-medical background and I, I have scored in first attempt. Okay. So it is very simple if you work out, if you work hard, it's a very simple task that I'm sure. If you have any doubts, if you have any uh, difficulties, just let me know by putting it in the comments. Okay, put it in the comment box and share this video, subscribe our channel if you have not subscribed yet and click on the bell button. All right. Thanks for watching Zeal to Know. I'll be next with the next chapter. Bye-bye.